school hall holds so many memories, right from Christmas parties where the children used to bring their clothes to dress up in, um, through to our May Day celebrations. And of course the hall has seen big transformation. Um, we had an extension in the, um, the early 90s which doubled it, the size of the hall, so that meant we could have even bigger uh, May Days and Christmas plays and get the parents um, to come in more. So yeah, the hall holds particularly fond memories. Uh, because of all the, the lovely things that we've done as a school in there. And then probably the grounds of the school um, are what I really remember, have so many fond memories of. Um, the pond, um, we've had goldfish in the pond, the children have, have loved feeding and, and watching grow. Uh, we have a beautiful pear tree, um, the lovely clematis that grows up it, and it was a privilege for our um, Prep 4 girls to sit on the grass underneath the pear tree in the summertime. So the grounds hold really special memories. Lots of playing outside, um, lots of mini beast hunts, and yeah, we're just having fun, fun in the grounds of the school. The room that we're in now is Mr. Hell's office, which did used to be Mrs. Upton's office. However, when I first started working here at Ashdell, it actually was a reception classroom or a pre-prep one classroom. And we had um, tables in a horseshoe, so children used to sit around horseshoe shaped tables and then we had all the jigsaws and the resources and all the, uh, the pencils and colouring things were all the way around the, the edges of the room. And then as extra space, we used to play out in the, in the hallway, in the corridor, um, just literally by the front door. And that's where we used to um, hang all the children's coats and then little straw hats used to be hung up on the pegs just outside this room. Um, we've also had quite big changes internally in terms of our um, dining room, changed into a cloak room, and is now my reception classroom. We used to have a science lab with gas taps, and the children used to do all kinds of wonderful things up there. That's now changed into an art room. We had an ICT suite. Um, we've always had a music room, which was nice. Um, yeah, so lots of the spaces have changed since we've, we've merged, but we've used the school very much so in the same way, um, in terms of lovely, happy, bright classrooms, um, and bright spaces outside as well, so lots of changes, but still very much the same feel um, as how it was when it was Ashdell. I think um, the flooring was quite iconic in the classrooms. They all had red lino. Um, in fact, the whole school was covered in red lino, apart from the hall, and the hall floor was parquet flooring, and we used to have to, the children had to put their plimsolls on um, to go into the hall, so we always had to change our plimsolls for assembly and for PE. Every time we went into the hall, we had to put our plimsolls on to protect the floor, because it was rather lovely. Um, but yes, the red lino is very, very symbolic of Ashdell and the Ashdell classrooms, and also the little tables and, and chairs, the little wooden desks and chairs that we used to have as well, very much part of yeah, the typical Ashdell classroom. And uh, the blackboard, that was a big feature. Um, when I first started teaching it, it was quite an innovative resource to have the, the revolving blackboard with the different sides you could spin around. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so the blackboards in the classroom um, were again a big part of what I remember uh, the school to be like. So technology has changed massively over the years that I've, uh, I've worked here at Ashdell and obviously now with Sheffield Girls. Um, we used to start with very, very basic computers. We had BBC computers, they were shared on a trolley which we would wheel into the, the classrooms um, and we all had our allocated sort of hour every day where we would have our, the trolleys would be wheeled in. Um, we also had a TV room which had built in um, tiered seating and uh, the girls were timetabled to go into the TV room um, and watch certain programmes. Um, and a big part of my job when I used to be a, um, a nursery nurse here was to record radio programmes. I'd have to record um, Poetry Corner uh, off, the, off BBC Radio um, and, and play those in the classrooms. And, and we thought that was, that was uh, quite cutting edge really, that we had, <laughs> we had recorded poetry lessons. So it's changed massively over the years. Um, but again, very fond memories um, of the girls sitting with their partners um, at the BBC computers, typing away um, and doing very, very basic coding and programming, um, which seemed to take hours and hours, um, and having to load um, cassette tapes uh, into uh, cassette plays to get certain games to work on the, on the computers. So yes, it's changed rather a lot over the years. Well, there is one area of the building which is still loved today, and that is, um, that is our wonderful walkthrough cupboards, a little bit like Narnia, 
So you will enter um, the art room either via the staircase, which is a traditional way, or you can go through the Narnia cupboard um, from one of the other classrooms. So because it is two old, old houses knocked together, we have these interconnecting staircases and interconnecting rooms, which are very exciting. They are like cupboards from the land which is the wardrobe. You literally walk through the wardrobe, through the cupboard, and you enter a whole new part of the building. So at the moment we have connecting um, cupboards through into the art room and also some of our classrooms have connecting cupboards as well. But they are very exciting parts of the school and they're still here. <laughs> I remember walking up the driveway with my mum and dad, both dad with camera in hand, filming every step of the way uh, with my oversized coat because they bought it two sizes too big to ensure that it lasted and my felt hat and my satchel um, and being greeted by Mrs Slack at the front door of Aurora House um, and then putting my finding my name on peg and you had to be able to spell your name before you joined so I remember finding my name putting my stuff on the peg and then heading into the classroom um, and meeting Miss Mason as well and at that point I remember my parents being rushed off um, out of the classroom as that Mrs Slack liked to you know to, you've left them now off you go um, and I remember not sort of looking back or anything and just really enjoying school and being in a school. Um, I do remember the plimsolls, having to wear the plimsolls to go into the hall um, and also the handkerchief check in the infant hall which is now the snowdrops uh, area where you used to have to hold your hanky up and wave it in the air. I think more vividly I remember my little sister, her first day, because by that point I was in pre-prep three and I was in Mrs Chapel's class and I felt this sense of responsibility for my little sister and was showing her the ropes to the point where I think Mrs Slack actually told me to I mean, why don't you go outside and meet your friends? Because I was telling her exactly what to do and what not to do, otherwise Mrs Slack would not be happy with her. <laughs> Um, but I do remember the sense of pride of me and my sister walking up hand in hand with our hats on, walking up to the front door, and that big red door with the snowdrops on, sort of being feeling like a sense of belonging and family um, was something really special. Oh, Mrs. Pilling's school lunches, they were amazing. I remember every day you could smell them during morning, and by the end of morning break, you were starving because you'd just been smelling them cooking it. I think my favourite meal was Mrs. Pilling's Chicken Supreme. No one actually knows what was in it, but it tasted delicious. Um, I did try and get the recipe off her before I left, um, but she'd know it's top secret, and I don't think anyone has ever got the recipe off her, but that is definitely something that I, I miss. Um, I remember going upstairs in the coach house, and you were allowed to carry your tray carefully upstairs, and that was seen as a privilege to sit upstairs rather than downstairs, and being taught how to use a knife and fork as well. And to this day, I still remember that I must not put my fingers too far down my knife and fork and get them dirty, and they must pick point forwards. So early on, um, I remember sitting outside Miss Whitehead's classroom, who's now Mrs. Leslie, um, and we used to have story time, and she would have this amazing story box, which was filled with a story, but before she got the story out, there'd be some items linked to the story, so you had to try and guess what the story might be about. And the excitement brewing in six-year-olds as to what they could possibly be, um, I just remember loving that sort of story time with Mrs. Leslie. Um, and then other things in the hall, Maypole rehearsals, May Queen performances and learning how to step in time to the music and walking to Mrs Chapel and having her tap you on the shoulder when you were ready to go and you must do it step in time with the music. That was a skill that I still have today and feel quite proud and any time I hear that music now it instantly comes back to me as something I have to do in step in time. Um, other things... Um, I remember being a robin during a Christmas production and having a big red breast on the front of me that was just a piece of paper that was stuck on there, but I loved that I was in brown leggings and a brown top with a red chest. <laughs> Took end of it. We made little he he sort of headbands as well to go with it. Just always the school coming together for Christmas productions and every year group having some involvement in the nativity with the pre-prep ones always doing the nativity scene at the end of it but the story before it always linked in every year group and we all had some crazy sort of outfit including like Hawaiian dancers and Scottish dancers I remember one year um, it was always a whole school event. It is always sad to say farewell to buildings that hold so many special memories but when one door closes, another one opens. And we are so looking forward to starting a new chapter this September as we reunite our infants and juniors together onto one site again.